All right, so uh, it's probably a good time to hand on uh, hand over to Martin then. Uh, so Martin has been a long time Helm maintainer, uh, works for IBM, uh, wrote, you know, a lot of the, did a lot of work on Helm 3, has done a lot of work on documentation, has been one of the, uh, I, he's probably at this point, either the number one or number two most frequent answerer of questions in the issue queue, and also the author of the uh, Helm 2 to 3, or co-author of the Helm 2 to 3 migration plugin. Uh, so Martin is going to kick it off with a discussion of uh, how to do these kinds of migrations. Go ahead, Martin. Okay, yeah, uh, thanks very much for that, Bridget. Um, so, and, and thank you, Matt, as well for for the introduction. So, um, what I'd like to speak to you about today, it's I suppose really it's a follow on from the great background and breakdown that uh, Matt has done around uh, between Helm Helm uh, V1 right over to V3 now. And the different changes that there are, and the reason why we, why if you have Helm two uh, releases, why you'll need to migrate over to Helm V three. So this we're going to base this around to the the plugin that we've written uh, to help you in this migration. So as Matt said, um, I'm a core maintainer uh, in Helm, and I work over at IBM. And there's my social if you if you want to reach out to me. So I suppose one of the questions that often come in is, um, do I need to migrate to Helm V3? Um, and this this is always a few interesting questions around, around this and why you'd need to migrate, et cetera. Um, I suppose I'll jump down a second. One of them is if you haven't used Helm V2 or you don't have um, any existing Helm V2 releases, then you can just use Helm V3. Um, it's like starting off new. So. There's, there's, it's not necessary for you to, to look into migration. If you do, then, then this is for you. So Matt mentioned it earlier, one of the reasons why, because uh, V2 is going end of life in, in the middle of November. So the support will be gone and Helm V3 is now the current supported release and has been out for the last um, close on a year now uh, in, in November. Um, one other thing, and it's come, it came up in the uh, chat as well. This is something else uh, always with migration is people are asking around the charts, do charts need to be migrated? And the answer for that is no, not necessarily. So uh, generally when you're looking at your charts, uh, Helm V3 will still be able to render the uh, API version V1 charts, um, except for what we mentioned a few minutes ago around the CRD install hooks and uh, the default name creation, but you can give it a flag now to, to create the namespace on the fly if you want. And around the CRD install hooks, it's a matter of you are uh, updating to use the newer version of uh, CRDs if you want your CRDs installed in that way. And the final thing is wh why the migration is here. I think uh, Matt went through really, really well on that is the whole idea of the changes underneath the hood and it's mostly around the release metadata and uh, how that format has changed and the way we store it inside in the cluster. And also, I suppose, around the, the local configuration as well that has changed. So, so what are your two options when, when, you want, when you're looking at migration? So if any of the criteria has touched you earlier on that you want to, to that, you, that you need to uh, use some of the uh, releases that you've deployed using Helm V2. Um, uh, how do you work around that then? So there's there's two patterns we, we can look at. And the first one, the Strangler pattern, is really looking at gradually phasing out your Helm V2 um, uh, um, the deployment. So what you do there is that for any new uh, deployment of charts, you're going to use Helm V3. And then as time goes on, Helm V2 will be phased out bit by bit till eventually um, Helm V2 doesn't have any more uh, deployments, that all the deployments then or the releases are now managed by Helm V3 and it can be removed. The other approach, and it's the one we're gonna talk about today in, in, in the talk here is uh, the in situ or when you want to migrate to straight over from your, your you wanna bring your Helm V2 releases over to Helm V3 and let Helm V3 manage them so that you can do uh, rollbacks or upgrades afterwards. So that's what we're, we're going to look at in, in the demo and what we're talking about here. So why would you choose this? Um, I suppose the key one here is, as I've been saying, is 
if you want to reuse uh, the existing uh, resources from Helm V2, uh, be that your configuration, local configuration, for example, what plugins you've, you've installed, what repositories you've installed, or any maybe chart starters that you use. Uh, and primarily, I suppose, the releases that you have. So, uh, for example, if you've deployed versions of, um, I don't know, uh, Redis, um, MongoDB, et cetera, and you want to keep maintaining them and managing them from Helm, um, uh, well, then this is what you want to do is to migrate that over so that the release information can be taken. As Matt said, in the old format, loaded out of the cluster and mapped across into new format and restored in the particular uh, namespaces and with the particular name in that Helm V3 expects. And we'll go through that when we're in the demo. We'll show, um, we'll show how you, uh, what, where the, the old formats were, where the new formats are, and, um, and we'll show it with the plugin, how it does the mapping across. And it's the plugin is the way we, we recommend because it does the automation of this. And um, it's not something you want to do in a manual approach especially you won't want to really look at um, trying to script this because um, it's just, um, yeah, the map in here is, um, is really needs to be wrapped up in something like the plugin. So you can have a look at the code inside in the, um, uh, the, or the repo and, and see what's involved. So what, what am I gonna cover in the demo? So we're gonna start off um, having the two versions of Helm sitting by, side by side, and they're going to point to a particular cluster. And uh, what I love is pre-prepared some, um, some releases that have been deployed using Helm V2. And it'll also have plugins and, um, um, and repos uh, already configured. Then we look at showing um, how to move or do a convert of, um, of the uh, Helm, v, Helm V2 release metadata over to Helm V3. And then how we can look at it then, uh, we'll be able to then uh, look at it uh, using Helm uh, V3. Um, we will look at uh, also the cleanup of those particular releases. Um, and we'll also look again then at doing that uh, with a release in different namespace to show that it can, how the data is gonna be stored then in Helm V3 in the different namespaces as opposed to in V2 when it's stored in the uh, Taylor namespace. And then we'll also look at, uh, which happens for a lot of people, I suppose, is they might have different versions of clusters that they're um, uh, using from, uh, you know, from a particular system. So we look at here using kubeconfig, how uh, Helm and also the plugin uh, connects across to the different uh, systems um, and uh, basically different clusters. And then we can see here that we can make the changes in there as well. And then finally, we look at uh, full cleanup. Uh, so in between, we probably do... Um, uh, uh, one by one release cleanups, and then we'll, we'll look at a full cleanup uh, at the end of that. So, okay, let's swap over to the demo. Okay, because I'm blind here, could someone help me out and see? Uh, can you see a terminal? Yep, we can see it. Fantastic. Thank you, Bridget. Okay, so let's kick off. Um, so first of all, um, look at the Helm versions we've out here. I'm going to Helm 2. I'm going to just call Helm. So you can see here it's, um, I'm using 216.12. You can see here that it's got the client and the server part, the server part being Tiller. And then if we look at Helm 3, which I'm calling Helm 3, you can see here that it's just got the client version and uh, what I'm using here, 3.1.3 for some reason. Um, okay, so that's great. So first of all, let's have a look at um, uh, what repos. Uh, so I'm just using Bitnami and uh, Jetstack at the moment and any plugins that I have installed. And then when we look at Helm 3, uh, we can see I have no repos installed. And when we look at the plugins, I have none installed either. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to look at, uh, and, and let's have a look at just what, um, 
Okay, so I have um, three releases deployed. Um, example, the Nginx and Redis. So what we're going to look at here is, first of all, we're going to look at the configuration. Um, so moving over the, um, the repos and the plugins and merging with any plugins or repos that I might uh, put into Helm 3. So we'll probably, we're going to add the uh, two to three um, uh, plugin in a minute. And then we're going to look at, after that, then look at the releases, et cetera, and see how we go on that. So let's first of all, let's install the, um, let's install the uh, plugin so we can look at the migration. So now when we look at the plugin list, we can now see that we've installed the two to three plugin. And let's have a look at the plugin. Um, so when you run in the command, you just run the your Helm tree release. Uh, any plugin you're running, you just run the Helm, Helm binary, uh, the name of your plugin, and uh, we'll have a look at the help on this. So you can see here that there's um, three main commands outside of the helm com or the help command. So we've clean up, convert, and move. So the first one we're going to look at is the move command. So what the move command does is it's for the moving or the copying over and over of configuration from helm two to helm three. So for example, what we said there, the uh, plugins list, the repo list, and if you have any uh, starter charts uh, are, are copied over so that helm three can now use them. Um, in the convert, it'll be for the conversion of releases. So uh, the the uh, moving of releases over to Helm Tree, so or the copying of releases over to Helm Tree, so that Helm Tree can then manage those releases. And then finally, the cleanup is the removal of release data, tiller data, and uh, configuration. So let's let's kick off with um, having a look at the um, the move command. So you can see here, there's um, not very many flags to it. And uh, it does what it says on the 10. It's the uh, migrating of the configuration over to Helm tree. So I think we're going to give that a, a go. Now, each one of these commands has a flag dry run. And that enables you to see what the command's going to be, uh, going, to be uh, going to do or what's it going to run and the different operations it will do uh, before you actually uh, hit, hit run, uh, before you actually decide to go with the command. So it gives you an idea of if you're unsure what you're running it against and if you want to make those changes or not. So if we hit this, okay. All right, I'm just missing the config. So you can see here with some of the, um, the commands around the cleanup and the configuration, the, uh, they will ask you if you're sure of the command because once it's done, um, it may be difficult to roll back from that. So that's why you get the warning on that. So you can see here what's gonna happen is it's gonna move over the config and the data and some of the cache from the, um, from the setup in Helm V2, which was stored usually in um, your home uh, dot Helm um, um, uh, path, in now into using more standard format for different uh, OSs. Uh, for example, for um, for Linux, it's using the XDG specification. So uh, things like using dot cache and dot local share and um, and dot config. Um, and then um, uh, using probably uh, user uh, accounts on Windows, et cetera, like that. So just using a more standard um, method for per OS than um, just using the .helm account. Um, so let's, let's kick it off and see, and see what happens. So when I accept that then, if I then have a look at my plugin list, I can now see that I've inherited the two plugins from um, from um, Helm V2, the diff and the Mac Cube, Cubes APIs. 
And then if we look at the repo list, we can see that we now have the Bitnami and the uh, Jetstack um, labels and we have those uh, particular uh, repos added. So that just shows you when you're doing the configuration, if you want to move that over. Um, I suppose that's an optional step as well in considering that, do you want that configuration or are you just going to add your own configuration from new, for example, because when you install, as we showed uh, Helm tree out of the box, it, there are no um, uh, repos added. So uh, it basically it's up to you then what repos you want to add after that. But if you, I suppose if you want to maintain some of the repos from before, then it's a good idea to, um, to, to copy them over. So the next part really is, is probably the main part of the um, uh, of the um, migration, and that's around your particular releases. So you can see here we've um, three releases, and if we look at this, we are gonna we're gonna migrate across uh, the Nginx release and the the Redis release, um, and there are two releases we would like uh, Helm v3 to manage. Uh, uh, when we move uh, when we're moving over to Helm v3 and before we get rid of Helm v2. So when we look at our Helm tree, what differs here as well is that we no need to give it the all namespaces because if we don't and we just go Helm ls, then we'll just see um, any of releases that have been deployed into the current namespace, whatever your current namespace may be. In this situation, um, I'm using a kind cluster, so I think at the moment it's the default namespace that's been used. Okay, so you can see here we've no releases for Helm tree. So what we want to do now is let's migrate over the Nginx release. So also to look at this as well is that Nginx has got two revisions. So those revisions need to be brought over as well, or they are the different history. For example, a, it probably is an upgrade if we look at the history on it. We can see here that it was an install and then uh, an upgrade. So the command for running um, for running um, the um, the migration of the releases is the convert command. Okay, and I'll just put a command up here. So what does this command do? So what this command does is it and uh, Matt would have touched it in in the the, um, the the theory and the history behind it is that it's going to look for the different um, releases that a particular tiller instance has uh, in its namespace. So the default tiller it uses the uh, cube na uh, cube dot, uh, the cube system namespace, and um, it will. Um, basically look for the particular release in uh, for, for in, in that particular namespace. Uh, it will, uh, and by default, um, uh, Helm v2 used uh, config maps. Now you could also configure it to use um, secrets, but uh, by default it was using config maps. So it pulls out the release information or the different release versions that are stored as uh, config maps or secrets in that namespace. Um, it then maps that data from the Helm v2 format into the Helm v3 format. And it then stores those release versions in the namespace of the release. So two big things there is the mapping of the release format. And no, they're going to be stored in the namespace of that the release was deployed in and not in the namespace of Tiller, which if it's by default, it's cube system. So some of the, the flags that, that might be of interest to you here is um, you, can, you can specify the namespace of your tiller. So if your tiller is in a different namespace outside of the cube system, and as, as Matt said, some people use one-to-many uh, tillers if they wanted the ability to try and provide uh, some multi-tenancy. Um, there's also people uh, that wanted to use an alternative to having Tiller in the cluster or running outside of the cluster, they use Tillerless. So you can also um, put in a flag for that if your, your Tiller is uh, not in the cluster. And um, also is the ability to, um, what I'll talk, what we're touching in a while is 
to um, use cube configuration to point to different clusters and uh, different context of clusters. So um, Helm uh, by default uses uh, this ability to point to clusters. So whatever your cube configuration is or what context it is, that's the particular um, that's the particular cluster that it will uh, that it will point to. And um, the same here with the um, with the uh, plugin. So let's. Let's go with this. So before I go on, um, folks, is there any questions out there that we need to touch on or will, it, will I keep on going at the moment? It might be worth clarifying um, the uh, what's going on with the stable repository, which is to say that um, people are a little bit confused about uh, the stable repository. There will be a blog post with more details coming out soon. But do you want to do you want to talk about that a little bit? Um, do do do. Um, mm, it's going to be mirrored. It's going to be available on charts.helm.sh. Uh, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, does maybe Matt wants to touch on that more? Um, he might be okay, more, we can come. Uh, we can come back to that. Let's get this question it? about the exact thing you were just doing too. Can we summarize yeah. that the Helm three two to three move will only move things around on my local machine, but won't touch the actual Kubernetes cluster? Okay, that's a very good question. Th thanks, Bridget. Yeah, I, I'll just stay on this for a moment, um, and we, we we can come back afterwards because uh, I I I, I want to be more aligned on what what's the. Um, to better describe around the uh, the stable, et cetera, if that's okay. So yeah, that's a very good question. So the configuration is your local configuration that's on your system. It has nothing to do with the cluster. Um, and we will see this in a while where I am gonna have my Helm v2 uh, binary and my Helm v3 binary, and they have their local configuration, for example, their repositories and their plugins, and they can also point to different clusters. And the configuration will stay the same, but the clusters will be different. Has that helped to, to clear that up? It should be. A uh, follow-up question to that. If I manage my cluster from multiple machines, do I need to run the move on all these machines? Um, yes. So your configuration is per your Helm binary. Um, so the Helm binary or the Helm command that you run, that accesses its configuration from where it's run from, the system it's run on. So it, it stores its configuration on that particular system. So if you have a different Helm binary in another system, or you have a different, in, uh, if you have it on another system, then you need to update the uh, configuration in that other system as well. Okay, great. Clear as mud. <laughs> uh, new question. Will Helm 3 provide the ability to specify your uh, cube context via environment variables if that's not already possible? Similar to how we can configure a shell to use a specific context for cube cuddle with Cube cuddle context. Yes, uh, the the flags are there already. Um, so if you look here, uh, and they're in um, they're with Helm as well. So you can see you've cube context and cube config. So you can specify it on the fly as well. Uh, but the default is it uses a cube config file first if you don't specify it. Okay. Uh, how do we verify all of our Helm v2 charts have been migrated to Helm v3? How do we? That is a charts issue that I mentioned earlier isn't really anything to do with migration as such. So that's to do with, so what you can do is, and that'll be to do with the if you're the maintainer of your charts or if you're using charts that are maintained by uh, somebody else. Uh, the way you can test is that uh, API version is v2 in the chart.yaml. If it is not v2, it's um, a v1 style chart, which can be used both in Helm v2 and Helm v3. 
So is it fair to say the short answer is your charts will almost certainly work um, unless you have some very specific corner cases, but you will almost certainly be able to use your old charts. Yes, and the corner cases would be the, you, the CRD install hooks and uh, also it won't create a namespace on the fly in Helm V3 unless you give it a flag, which is, I think, generate namespace when you're doing an install or upgrade. Ah, uh, interesting question. How do I d identify the actual version of Helm either in the Kubernetes cluster or in my actual charts? You, you won't be able to determine. So the version of Helm doesn't have anything to do with the chart. So for, I suppose, the analogy I can think of Helm itself is like a power tool and charts are like the bits that you put into the power tool. Um, so I suppose charts are where the value are. It's where you're asking what you want to deploy. And then Helm is the engine to do that deployment. Um, so to take that chart, to render it and to give it a Kubernetes API uh, server. Um, whether you use Helm v2 engine or the Helm v3 engine is irrelevant unless you get a bit that can't fit properly in. For example, if there's an issue with the CRD install hooks. Um, how do you find in your cluster? Uh, I'm going to show that in a few minutes. Um, you would know by Tiller will be installed in the cluster for Helm v2. Uh, for Helm v3, uh, you won't know because it's only a binary. It's only a binary running on your system. It's something you run. Uh, it's only a client. Okay, great. Uh, another question. If uh, you're using an umbrella V1 chart to deploy many charts at once using requirements.yaml, will the two to three chart, uh, sorry, will the two to three tool convert the chart and dependency charts? Uh, no. The two to three tool has nothing to do with uh, converting charts. The conversion of charts are done by the maintainers uh, of the chart. So be that if it's you that owns the chart or maintains the chart, or if you're using a chart from somebody else, then it's worth going to the repository where that chart is hosted and seeing if there's a Helm, uh, if there's an API v2 version of the chart. So with the migration, we're concerned with the migration of the, um, the local configuration and the um, release uh, data. Um, not, it's not, it's not, it has nothing to do with the charts themselves. Will I go on while we have a chance and we can come back uh, again? We do. Yeah, let's get stop. one more question in. Um, Compare and contrast Helm v3 and Flux CD. Flux CD is another piece of software. I, I'm not sure it's specifically related to Helm. Um, ooh, I, I can't. I don't have an yeah. answer for that one at the moment. Yeah, if that's okay. I, I don't either, but I will drop a link in to the chat for what I found about what Flux CD is. You can certainly read about that. Uh, do we want to? Uh, talk briefly about how the FAC now covers how to point your Helm 2 or 3 client to the new chart repository archive. There's a link in the chat about it, but basically uh, you can point your Helm 2 or 3 client to the new chart repository. Um, Just pointing that out. Because that was okay, that so what, what do we want? What do we, yeah, sorry, you, you've, you've got me there. What do you want me to do on that? Uh, Oh, I was just saying, I don't know if people want to scroll up to that link that Matt Butcher dropped in a little bit ago, but that might be relevant. Okay, is the link, is the link in there? Yep. Um, it's just the troubleshooting section of the FAQ. Okay. And do you, uh, are, I want to let you get back to your demo, Martin. 
So. Yeah, like if, if you can if you can drop me the link, that'd be great because yeah. this is still this is Absolutely. coming out on the fly now, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Let's get let's get back to the demo on this. So here, what I mentioned earlier is uh, just before the questions is that we talked about we want to bring over the metadata. So picking up the release metadata, mapping it into new format, and storing it into the particular namespace. So if we take a look at Nginx to start with. Let's look at a dry run of that. And you can see here that what it's going to do here is it's going to create a new uh, release version V1 and V2 um, in the particular format for V3. But it's not going to touch the, um, the Helm V2 unless we ask it to delete it. You can give it the flag uh, dash less delete V2 that releases, or you can wait and delete it yourself manually. Now, one of the key aspects of this is it's just the release data or the state information for Helm. We're not going to touch any of the Kubernetes objects that were deployed in the particular chart. It's just that metadata of state that Helm uses. So if we look at this, um, so let's give it a run. Um, without the dry run and let's see what happens. Okay, so we can see now that it's created the, uh, the particular release versions and it also tells us that, that the V2 release information is still there. So if we go M3 uh, LS this time list, we can now see we've engine X and we can see here that the date in it is from earlier today when I set up the uh, particular, because um, if we look at the time now, it's uh, much later. So you can see here, that's the particular, the last time it was deployed. And if we, if we look at the Helm list, we can see that it's from earlier today. Uh, the time differences are there because um, previously it wasn't used in uh, the time zones. It just used the local time in Helm uh, when it uh, showed the listing in uh, Helm V2. Okay, so now we can see here that we have, um, the, the release information for Helm V3 and Helm V2. And that if we look at, we can see here that we have the particular um, deployment still running. It's a basic Nginx server. And we also have a particular uh, example chart, which we showed earlier that's running, okay? So when we talked earlier about, and Matt talked earlier about, the data that was there for V2 and the data that's now there for V3. We can see here, when we have a look in here, and what we're doing in this situation is, it's using a particular label, Olam Tiller, and all different namespaces. So if you have different instances of Tiller running, uh, then you would see data like this stored for in different namespaces, or if you change the particular label of, of who the owner is, then possibly you'll have to change the label here as well. Um, but you can do that with the plugin where you can give it a different label if there's um, different, um, if you're using different label for your tiller, and you can also give it a different namespace if you have different instances of, of tiller running as well. And you can see here that we have all the information stored here that we have for the listing. And you can see here that there's two pieces of release information for Nginx because there's version one and version two. And these need to be stored for the management that Matt uh, described earlier around the rollbacks, et cetera, you want to do of your particular release. Now, when we look at it for V3, you can see this time we're looking at the owner by default is going to be, the owner is going to be owner equal to Helm uh, in small letters. Our, um, and you can see here that we have two versions of, of an Nginx and that's what we've converted over at the moment. So that sh shows you what happens when you do the migration over of the release data from Helm 2 to Helm, uh, to, um, uh, from Helm V2 to Helm V3. So now if we look at this, The next part, probably part of this is, so just, I just want to touch on the cleanup. And this is something that as the plugin has evolved from users have looked for this capability and pushed this capability is around the idea that, okay, 
instead of when we first uh, looked at the design of the plugin, we say, all right, we're going to provide cleanup. People will do their, um, their migrations over to different releases, and then they'll want to clean up everything. But what we found over time is people want the capability of, uh, actually, I would like to clean up my releases uh, one by one. So when I do the migration over, I want to make sure that that release is working, and then I'll clean up that release. So what we might do in this situation is if we do an upgrade, let's do an upgrade of, of that, um, of, the, um, of the Nginx release, but we're going to upgrade uh, now in Helm v3, not in Helm v2. And I know the, the particular um, chart that was deployed was the version of the chart in Vietnami. So when I go to upgrade that, I then end up with an error in this situation. So the error here is, the hint here is, it's telling you, you need to run the repo update. So that's one thing with the configuration that we found, and we haven't found a very nice solution to it, was that there's problems with the cache that's stored, so between V2 and V3, and uh, we just found that the solutions to it, that putting it into the Helm, Helm core or into the plugin weren't, um, were just going to be too uh, complicated. So what we've decided on that was that if you end up with problems like this, uh, which are repos when you do the upgrade that you can just do an update on it and uh, that'll align the repos back up. So when I do the update like that with Helm tree and then I go and do the upgrade, we can see here that it's, um, it seems to have um, succeeded. Now, I suppose this is a bit of a superficial upgrade because I haven't changed anything in the settings, but if we go we can see here we're now going to revision three. And if we look at our secrets, we can see here that it's been updated to version three. You can see here the date has now changed from um, to the current uh, uh, time. And uh, if we look at Helm, uh, if we look at our V2, we can see that V2 is now not being touched. Um, so these are some of the ways that people are starting to use the plugin. We would be saying, to move along and do your migrations as, as much as possible for the one reason here that that if you try working with Helm 2 and Helm 3 um, simultaneously, i.e. making changes or upgrades with Helm 2, while you've Helm 3, you could end up with clashes in the cluster where you have um, cluster-wide resources. So to be just aware, aware of that. So now what I talked about is having a look at the... Um, the cleanup. So you can see with the cleanup, there's a lot of um, uh, similar flags that we had with the um, with the migration of the um, the release data, and you can see also there's a couple of ones down here where you can do individuals like do a cleanup of releases, uh, like using dot dot release cleanup or you can do tiller cleanup, or you can also use the dot dot name flag, which is where you want to just uh, remove the release data from V2 for a particular um, release. So that's what we're going to use here. So if we go and we, we try to dry run on this again. So you get this warning because once this release data is gone, it's gone out of the cluster and Helm V2 will no longer be able to manage that release. So you can see here what it's going to delete. It's going to delete the two release versions, all the history and the information about that release engine X. So let's give it a go. Okay, now we can see that we have the, the two, uh, two releases have been deleted. And if we go to LMLS, we can now see when we do a list, we can now see that um, that the engine X release has now been removed. It's no longer in, in, in V2. And if we look at the config maps, it's gone out of the cluster. And then if we have a look at a listen on Helm 3, we can see that engine X is there. And if we look at we can see here that the 
Kubernetes resources that were to be deployed as defined in the chart are still running. So that's one thing to note here is that, and I'll say it again, is that the plugin does not go near the deployed resources. It's the release data that it's going to uh, do the, um, the mapping in uh, for Helm V3. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to have one quick go at um, doing the... Um, the Redis, uh, I'm going to do a migration to the Redis because it's in a different namespace. You can see here it's been deployed in the Redis namespace. So um, I won't look at the, um, the um, do a dry run, etc. on this. I'm just going to go for it and run it. Okay, so that's migrated over. And if we go Helm tree LS, okay, we see nothing because, as I say, the listing now for Helm tree. The commands now are based on the um, on the namespace that you're running as a user. So whatever your current um, namespace context is, that's what it's going to run your command against. So that's why I need to put in all namespaces. And we can now see that we have Redis here and we have a date from earlier today. And uh, we'll now clean it up from... Okay, now we'll clean up the um, the, uh, the the Redis uh, installation from um, from um, Helm v2. Uh, just getting the command there. So we can see here we're running the same again. We give it the name Redis because that's the release we want to release. We want to remove. All right, so when we go, we can now see that Redis has been removed and... Um, we can see here that um, we can see here when we check in the cluster, we can see here that the Redis service is still running in the cluster. Okay, so that's looking at you know the configuration force, the local configuration, and then looking at how do we map our uh, our different um, how do we map our different uh, release information over to um, to V2, okay? So I'm just gonna change gears slightly a minute. So what I'm gonna look at here is that if I go across to a different cluster, which some people are doing. Um, so if I just change for the moment, I'm just gonna cha change the context of the cluster. Um, okay, lovely. Let's try this, okay. That worked, that's good. So this time what we're doing is we've just swapped the context of the cluster that we're, we're looking at. So the previous cluster was a kind cluster 17. I'm looking at a client cluster 16 here. And when I, when I do an uh, Helm LS this time, you can see here that there's a different release. And if we do Helm tree LS, you can see that it has no releases, even if I put in the namespace. Okay, um, okay, if I can spell, oh, I forgot the dash. Uh, okay, so you can see that what we're looking at is a different cluster at this stage. So, so you can see this, when we look in the cluster this time, we're looking at basically just one deployment, uh, which is demo um, my chart, okay? So what we're gonna do this time is we will, um, we will um, migrate over this release information and then we'll do some cleanup after that. So I think someone asked that about, what we have here is we've two versions, we've two, we've the binaries, Helm, Helm V2 and V3 binaries, that basically the clients can point to different clusters and work off those different clusters. In this situation, you'll see here that there's a Tiller instance running in this cluster because it's Helm v2, but there's no need for that service uh, for Helm v3. And when we were in the previous cluster, there's a different uh, instance because obviously it's a different it's a different cluster. So if we now do uh, 
we do convert demo. And now we look at the listing of that. We can see now that we have uh, that particular um, that particular um, uh, re release now being managed also by uh, V3. Um, now, what we can do look at then is one of the flags I talked about a minute ago, if you wanted to, you're happy enough with, you've made all the conversion of your releases over um, and you're happy that you want to clean up the release information, you can use the release cleanup flag. Okay. So when you go Helm LS then, you'll find nothing. And when you look at the config map, okay, there's, there's no um, release information stored in the cluster there. Um, so the final part of that is, on this cluster only, you might say, okay, I no longer have any more release information in here. I will no longer be using Helm V2 to, man to use this cluster anymore to do my deployments, etc. So I can get rid of, um, I can get rid of Tiller. So when you're looking for Tiller, you will be looking for whatever namespace you put it into and whatever the, um, the label that's used, usually you'll have a label app equal to Helm. So to get rid of that, um, we just use the, the cleanup flag for this. And what this will do is it'll remove the uh, Tiller instance from, if we look at the dry run, it'll remove the Tiller instance from the cluster. So if we run it, so once we run this, we will no longer be able to, um, to run Helm against this uh, cluster because of the fact that Tiller is no longer there to communicate with. Okay, so if we go Helm this, this time, we can see you can't find uh, Tiller. Um, does Helm tree still work? Yes, it does. And then if we go back to, um, if we see what's still running inside in the cluster, what has been deployed out, you can see here, we still have our um, demo release. So we're gonna go back now again to the, our original cluster, and we'll just show, uh, finish off by doing a full uh, cleanup of, um, of uh, Helm, Helm V2 when you're finished. So. If I just okay, and we look here again, we can see here okay, and uh, if I use the all name space, I'll see that Redis is there as well. So we we've now come to I suppose you you've come to the stage where um, this um, you want to get rid of the um, the Tiller instance in here. Um, any release information that's left, you're happy you've done all your conversions over, and you've also um, you uh, you don't need Helm any, or Helm V2 anymore, so you don't need the configuration. So you want everything deleted in one in one go. So first things on that, if there's any releases you haven't migrated over, you need to delete those releases first. And the reason for that is the plugin does not touch any of the objects that have been deployed into Kubernetes. Uh, as defined in the chart. So it's just looking after the release metadata in the cluster. So if you don't delete beforehand, the release uh, metadata will be gone and uh, the um, objects that have been deployed by that release uh, will then be orphaned. So uh, what I'll do first in that is I go Helm delete um, example because I was just an example release that I was using. I don't need to manage over Helm V3. So I just get rid of it. Now we can use purge if you want. It doesn't really matter because we're going to be deleting the release metadata afterwards. So if you go and release, if you do a list minus A, you can see here that the, the, the release history or metadata is still hanging around, uh, but that's okay. We're going to clean that up in, in a minute. So when we do the delete this time, um, let me just get the command so it'll be faster. Um, we can now run uh, clean up without any of the flags. Now, obviously we'll have a look at the dry run on this to see what it's gonna do, all right? And you've been warned, there's a warning here saying to you that 
basically you may you you may not be able to use any release information afterwards uh, with v, with Helm v2. So it's telling you the fact here that all the release metadata, all the release data, tiller and all your configuration are going to be removed. So Helm v2 will no longer be usable. So when we kick this off, so you want to be sure before you do this that you've done all your migrations, you're happy with the migrations, your configuration has come over, um, and that you're ready, that you're happy with your Helm v3 and you're ready to go forward with Helm v3. So when we kick off the clean off here. Okay. So let's have a look. You can see your tillers there no longer. If we do, we can see it's no longer in there. And then we can also see that the home directory has been removed or the configuration directory or dot, your dot helm directory is gone. Okay, it's no longer available. Um, and um, so you know the situation where essentially all you're left is with the Helm v2 binary and any of your deployments, um, et cetera, are now gone and are now being managed by Helm v3. So if we go back to Helm v3, we can see here that we have Nginx and Redis, uh, the releases that we migrated over. If we look at our repo list, we can see here with Bitnami and uh, Jetstack. And if we look at our plugin list, we can see here that we have the plugins that were migrated over for us, uh, the two here, and then also the two to three plugin that we have there. So that's pretty much it when you're when you're going through your migrations. It's It's really, do you need any of the configurations? If you do, bring them over. And then which releases uh, do you want to keep? Uh, uh, you want to keep and bring with you. I suppose the advice we give around this too is that if you haven't been managing your history size in Helm v2 before you do the migrations up, either clean up some of that history, or you can also specify a flag. Um, if I can just look at it now. Uh, take it off my head. Uh, flag here, release first versions max. So if you give it that value, it will take the last number of a release versions and uh, drop the rest of it. So it'll only convert over that many. So if you say 10, it'll take 10 of the latest release versions that are there. Okay. Um, so that there are a few things to, to look out for. Um, and once I suppose the great thing about this plugin is once you've done your migrations over, uh, you've finished with your different instances of Helm v2, your different tiller instances, etc. Uh, you no longer need this plugin. So um, it's just for getting your conversions over there and being able to manage some of the um, uh, resources that you've uh, deployed with Helm uh, v2. Okay, so I'm just going to go back quickly to the deck and we can answer more questions then, uh, Bridget, if that's okay. So, okay, okay. Uh, there's a question that I think is a lot, so perhaps we could just point them to the fact of uh, what are the main command differences between v2 and v3? I'll drop a link in with more detail, but Martin, mm -hmm. do you want to? Tell us about some of the ones that really stand out for you. Um, you put me on the spot today, Bridget. You're really, really catching me out. Um, I've migration in my head. Um, what are the ones? So delete has now become uninstall. Um, the repo searches have changed, if I can remember as well. Um, I think, yeah. Uh, have a look at the fact, actually, because you put me on the spot. Or is Matt Butcher going to help me out here? Matt Butcher has been looking vigorously in the background while, while this question yeah, came in. I, I dropped a link in. Um, I think that a, a lot of people probably will find that because so many of the old um, commands are aliases now, they won't see a lot of hands-on differences. Uh, no, they won't. But I think we'd prefer for people to move on because yeah. if we've made them aliases, 
they're going to go out. Uh, eventually going to be removed probably in Helm 4. Uh, a lot of the reasons for the changes around it has been really good work by Adam Reese and, and uh, Matt Fisher is around. We wanted the, the client to be more like uh, cube, cube control uh, or whatever you want to call it, cube control, <laughs> cube cutler, whatever. Um, so we wanted it to be similar to that. And, and one of those ones that really, really kind of caused real consternation was the removal of the ability to create a namespace on the fly when you were doing a deployment or an installation or an upgrade. And the reason behind that was you can't do that with cube, cube control. So we, we said, well, you shouldn't be able to do it with Helm as well. Uh, we ended up then having to put in um, a generate namespace flag because there was such a backlash against it. But I think what we're trying to do is we really want to get that consistency with um, cube control. And, and that client, because, you know, if you've been using Kubernetes, you know, you know, we want Helm to be the, a similar type of experience or the other way around. If you started your Kubernetes experience with Helm, which a lot of people do, you know, you, when you go over into Kube, Kube Control, you're, you're, you're okay using that client. So that was one of the reasons behind it. And um, I think probably going to the FAC is probably the best way to do that. The other thing as well, and it's something we didn't mention, it's just coming to my head, is Helm init. You no longer need to init, okay? So the initialization was for the ability to, you know, put Tiller into the cluster and set up configuration that needed to be set up out of the box. Um, with Helm 3, the nice part of this is the any configuration can be set up on the fly or can be lazy. Uh, lazy created, and we don't need it straight out of the box. So th they're the reasons for that, um, because that question actually has come up a lot. Where is my helmet nick on? Uh, so, and uh, as we say, as we said earlier, it's still just the client. So um, yeah. So will I just finish up the recap, and then we we go into any other questions? Then Bridget, would that be best? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So just to to recap on it is. Look, Helm V2 is going into life in uh, the middle of next month. Um, our recommendation and suggestion, strong suggestion is please try and move over to Helm V3 as soon as possible because uh, there will be no more updates to Helm V2. And um, we really think Helm V3 um, definitely brings you more simplicity and more security and uh, just around, I suppose, maybe that bit more robustness from stuff that has been learned, as Matt has said, from when Helm V2 was first created to the way uh, Kubernetes has progressed in those three or four years. Um, so if you already are using Helm V2 and you do not care about your releases that you deployed with Helm V2, then just start using Helm V3 and get rid of Helm V2. If you do care about the releases you deployed, which I think most people will do, uh, then we suggest you start using Helm V3 to uh, start managing that. So you start migrating over and then you start removing, um, cleaning up your Helm V2 as you go along till eventually you just have Helm V3. And that's why we came up with the idea of the plugin tool. And this goes way back to um, Seattle, I'd say, in 2000. 2000 and I was going to say eight, but in 2008, we were all much younger. 2018, I would think, is, is the right one there. And that came up in a, a, a deep dive talk, actually, with Matt and, and Adam. So, um, yeah, so we, we want the ability for you to move it over. You do not really look if you want to go in and have a look at the internal informants of the data. But, you know, it's better that the tool does it for you. <laughs> Uh, because it's, you know, it makes it much easier. So these are the reasons why uh, you, you, you want to do that migration over. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that's about it. And a few resources there if you want um, to take a look at. And the FAQ is down there as well, actually. So if you, if you want to have a look at that. So, um, Bridget, fire away. Wonderful, please. Martin. Thank you so much. Um, Let's see, one more question, and uh, you may be able to put Butcher on the spot to answer this one, which is, uh, will Helm V2 be able to access charts that were stored by V, sorry, will Helm V3 be able to access charts stored by Helm V2 in a private repo? Um, 
possible problems in the past and wondering, will V3 be able to use existing charts out of a private repo? In this case, ACR, but the question I suppose applies to any private repository. The answer I'm gonna to say to that is yes. And that person's gonna come in with a use case probably this evening or tomorrow. <laughs> Do it this evening because I'll be finished for the day. <laughs> um, this is the one chance I've got to joke as well, Bridget. I got really serious there on the command line, I think. Um, but um, uh, no, on a serious answer, yes, you should be still able to use that repo. So we have added a lot of capabilities and, and some brilliant capability was added by uh, Josh Jaliski with the ability to use OCI registries, okay? So prior to now, our registries were, I suppose, HTTP-based uh, registries where you could get out of it. Um, and we had the different repos, which is something we'll touch in a few minutes because I think Matt's been putting a good doc with the, together with the um, chart maintainers uh, like Matt Farina and, and Scott have been doing a lot of work around the, the stable and stuff, which we'll touch on in a few minutes. But the idea here is that you're still able to get your repos and that you can touch repos now like an OCI registry like, um, like Docker. For, for instance, um, and you can get your charts out of that. So that's still at experimental, but I would, I would imagine in the not too distant future that we'll go to a full scale feature because of the fact that it's getting nearer and nearer to completion of the work that it's been done on it. But uh, yes, you, you, you can get at your repos still. Great. Um, and Butcher, do you have anything to add on that uh, topic? Uh, no, unless you want me to talk now a little bit about the repos, the part that I kind of skipped over real fast. Right, right. Yeah, if you want to add a little bit more clarity, because Martin got asked kind of in the middle of his yeah. demo about uh, what's going on with the repositories, right. and I know you had some info for that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, sorry, I had all to you, Matt. I didn't want to answer Bridget because um, the fact I didn't uh, one. I didn't want to say something that may be not totally right. So I think I think Matt's probably the best person to answer it. Yeah, but thanks. Okay, yeah, sure, I can answer. Uh, first of all, thank you all for holding all your hard questions until it was Martin's turn to answer them. I very much appreciate that. <laughs> uh, Martin uh, does I don't, I don't appreciate that either. And uh, I, have to say, I have to say, I did say to Bridget, just get in there and ask me questions in the middle of it. And I was on a flow about, you know, where I moved to the migration and... It's you no know, one of those things where you go, I regret saying to Bridget, ask me the questions in the middle of it. But no, questions are always good. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so, um, so I did briefly in, in the uh, November 13th, 2020 doom and gloom slides um, uh, talk about needing to move repositories. So let me just explain briefly what's going on. So uh, the chart repositories, the code that we work on for the charts lives in github.com slash helm slash charts. Then the CI pipeline builds them and puts them into a helm chart repository. Uh, and the helm chart repository has been hosted for years out of a Google storage bucket. Um, that bucket is going to go away on November 13th. So we have a backup uh, that will be hosted by, GitHub, uh, by GitHub itself. That'll be um, charts.github.com slash stable and slash incubator for the two different ones. So uh, I have, uh, I wrote the documentation for all of this and I dropped it in the, yeah, Bridget just dropped the blog post in and there's some documentation in the Helm FAQ for Helm 3 that explains how to move from one repo to the other. Uh, Helm 2.17 will attempt to do some of this for you, but not all of it, because um, we don't want to break anybody. Uh, but the the short version is on November 13th, you'll need to be pointing at the new stable and incubator repos if you want to keep using those. Now, keep in mind, again, those repos aren't going to be getting any uh, new updates or patches or anything like that. Those repos will be in maintenance, or will be in archive mode from that point on. But uh, if you have an automatic CI system or if you're frequent users of the stable or incubator repository, it's probably a good idea to switch over to those new ones anyway. So the, the FAQ is out in the documentation. We talked about it a little bit on the Helm five-year birthday blog post. Um, Matt Farina, one of the other core maintainers, has written a blog post that will get published soon that really talks through the details of that. So keep an eye on the Helm blog for sort of a walkthrough of what you need to do about that. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that kind of covers the basics of it. Uh, so one more thing to add to that November 13th list. <laughs>